we welcome uh, Chris Ward to stage, preventing the tech apocalypse. I'm going to start this presentation with a couple of short stories that I hope uh, illustrate kind of my journey on why I've ended up here. So the first is, uh, I've been to quite a few cities over the past couple of years, or just friends who live in them, and hearing a very similar story over and over again of rising rents and costs. And a lot of this has been down to, partially down, to an influx of highly paid tech workers, pushing others to the fringes or worse, to the streets. And to kind of cap this off, a couple of weeks ago I was in a few American cities where actually the problem was so bad and people's sort of reaction to it so bad. I actually am not a person who, very, who, who cries very often, but it actually it made me very upset because I, had no, I sort of felt like I was part of the problem, but I didn't really know what I could do about it. Um, so that's, that's, uh, this is only one problem that our industry, my industry, maybe I'm not sure how many of you are part of it, is responsible for. There's other things like increased isolation, depression, distraction, short-term memory, attention. Then there's things like trolling, bullying, and uh, privacy. And then there's, of course, uh, and if you're not sure what this picture is, uh, last, uh, last year I was lucky enough, in quote marks, <laughs> to witness a talk from the ex-CEO of Cambridge Analytica about their, um, their work. And it was quite mind-blowing. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> that's another story. But yeah, also privacy and polarization based on a lot of the analysis of this data. And of course, maybe job losses. This is one of those ones where we're still yet to see if this plays out, but it's something we should acknowledge as well. So in these times of reflection for the tech industry, I wanted to take a, a good hard look at ourselves in uh, 12 minutes. <laughs> and how the majority of us in the industry, and I fully acknowledge that I represent the majority of us in the industry, can help make it better for not only the minorities, but also our end users and those more widely affected by our products, ideas, and businesses. Or to bring it back to one other story that kind of put it home even more for me, I, I used to be a musician in the early 2000s, a, a professional musician, and uh, recently, some old friends of mine from that era were playing a uh, concert in uh, Berlin, where I now live, in a venue that was closing. It was having their last concert because the startup upstairs complained about the noise. Or as he put it, in a more blunt way. And I suppose this really hit home for me because for those of us in the, the tech world, we kind of have gone in a very short period of time from being the welcomed outsiders and disruptors of establishment to the disliked and the blamed. And so this is why I sort of, before it gets worse, I wanted to try and prevent things getting worse. And unsurprisingly, it's about people, not necessarily technology. Um, and I hope that other people from other industries notice some commonality in yours and get something out of this too. And uh, so this is a word I've invented. And I, every time I struggle, it's not all impossible to say. <laughs> Tech copper lips. <laughs> so let's go with that. Let's begin with arrogance. So the geeks have risen. We're in demand. And we have the freedom and the power to pick and choose the roles we want with the companies we want. Many of us were probably marginalized and made to feel weak and insignificant as children. And this newfound power is seductive. And, but the attitude of many of the startups I meet can exacerbate and manipulate these feelings to fever point, making you sometimes, honestly, and this is more for startups maybe outside of this of space, make you honestly feel like you're changing the world and that the world should pay attention to you and owes you a favor, more dangerously, when actually you're just making another dating app or another car sharing app, or another e-commerce app that we already have hundreds of already. Alongside this, we invent words like 
very sort of actually sort of fairly male heavy words unsurprisingly and very uh, powerful words that are completely overused now things like smashing it and crushing it ninjas heroes rock stars this word is now completely overused <laughs> uh, it means something slightly different but then possibly one of the over most overused of the lot and when i actually polled some people on social media about the words they were sick of hearing this one was by far the most popular and we'll come to it in a minute this arrogance and complacency can lead to or intensify the other factors I cover today. Superiority makes you feel good, but it can blinker you to the reality and other perspectives. So let's go further with disruption. I feel like every company in the world should start employing a full-time member of staff <laughs> whose role it is to think about the worst case potential of their products and practices. So is that peer-to-peer -peer room platform destined to be a way for common citizens to monetize their empty spaces? Or will it result in city rents driven sky high by unscrupulous landlords? Does that platform for finding people just like you bring you together or drive us more apart? Or more crucially, are you solving problems that actually exist or that you just invented yourself? So, before you embark on a new idea, large and small, think if it's actually needed and its potential effects. And fundamentally, I suppose, bear in mind the potential victims of your disruption. Maybe your work is necessary, but at least be conscientious of those whose lives you'll be changing with it. Um, firstly, I'm just going to show a few examples to cover, I guess, the, the biggest problems in diversity, and I'm not going to cover them myself. I'm going to mostly let the, the images speak for themselves. And these are not obscure examples. You may have seen some of these before. And I guess firstly because I don't feel qualified to cover some of these, but also because many other people have uh, written about them and said things about them in far better than I can. So I don't know if you can even see this, but yeah, various examples of how a dominant majority can change uh, platforms for the worst because all eventualities weren't considered. And this one, which hopefully is clear what the problem is, you've probably seen this. Yeah, okay. Um, so as an industry used to being a monoculture or maybe a series of monocultures and broadly used to being outsiders, we have certain ways of doing things and attitudes that we are very comfortable with, and subsequently we expect that everyone else is the same. And I feel like I repeat the mantra, assume nothing, on such a regular basis that surely it must be sinking in by now, but it's such an essential part of so many problems, I guess I will have to keep repeating it. And the other thing I would like to say, especially when it comes to the, the sort of more of the diversity I'm talking about, we're not all actually like this. I, I hate to disappoint you. <laughs> uh, there are many aspects of, but there are many aspects of geek and hacker culture that kind of are reflected in stereotypes like this that don't actually sit comfortably with everybody. It doesn't mean you have to stop doing them, of course, but it means be a little more flexible and aware that if someone looks uncomfortable with an activity or unknowledgeable on an activity, don't coerce them into it or make them feel bad for taking part in it. And I guess this is especially important for uh, interacting with the people outside of the inner circles we tend to create in tech as well. And then we're often very patronizing to people when they try to break into them and they don't appreciate a shared, shared humor. So don't treat them like an idiot, I guess, is my point there. Okay, here's another one, another topic I'd like to cover. Tech professionals, especially uh, programmers, typically get paid well relative to the average wage for a country or an area. And in many locations, as I sort of said earlier, we can kind of pick a wage within reason. And if we could justify our worth, we will probably get what we ask for. And this is not because programming itself is valuable, but because those with the sufficient skills and experience at the moment are rare. And I guess as an aside to that, I would say to any of my programmer friends in the audience, don't assume that will last forever. 
So this could sometimes make us unconscious of an average wage or the cost or worth of items that we have and we expect other people to have, consciously or subconsciously flaunting our wealth and again making others around us feel inferior and uncomfortable. So in addition to great wages, we often actually get other benefits, free drink, free food, free travel, free education, um, and much more. And we're lucky to receive these. And while the trend of happy workplaces is broadening into other places, it's still rare. So I would say welcome these benefits and acknowledge how lucky you are to receive them, which gives me a perfect opportunity to thank the Catapult organizers for being so generous to the speakers. And I guess, whoops. <laughs> And I guess this was a quote from someone who helped me review some of the initial drafts of this. Um, awareness of our privileges is not only a positive to those around us, but makes us more conscious of it and will make us more flexible, more aware, and more understanding. But so what? I hear, I hopefully all of you are enjoying what I've discussed so far or mulling on it, but what should we do? What do we actually do about this? How do we change, especially some of the more deep-set people in tech's minds and attitudes to this? I'm probably speaking to a room full of people who probably agree with a lot of what I've said here and are conscious of the way they act. You are not necessarily the people I need to be speaking to. So how do we, how do I, stop preaching to the converted? I guess I'm yet to test these ideas, and this is partially why I'm here. And I spend a lot of my time convincing developers to do other things for the better, as well as just these topics. So it's something I have had a lot of uh, <laughs> experiments with. Um, sometimes convincing them to look beyond the latest and greatest technologies is actually quite a challenge. But I, what I've tried to, to find recently is finding the, the um, key people that they respect in the kind of chain in a company. These might be people like engineering leads, tech leads, or technically minded product people that they respect. And then explain your ideas, your concerns, the things you'd like to change to them, and hopefully they will pass it down the, their kind of organization, or pass it across the organization maybe is a better word, to the people who respect their opinion. I also encourage uh, those of you who are in, in the tech space and interested in meeting some like-minded people to get involved with organizations like the Good Technology Collective, the Center for Humane Technology, which is started by ex-employees of many of the companies that we're currently uh, sort of in the, in the, the, the afterflow of their uh, issues. And also the Tech Workers Collective, which looks at things from a different perspective, but is still quite interesting. But more importantly, I would say, if you work with developers, make sure they come to events like this and get a different perspective. So it's kind of hard to know how to end a presentation like this. Uh, so I'm going to end with something positive. To quote, again, someone who reviewed this earlier for me, we are smart people, but so are others. And we are not inherently more brilliant or superior. We are currently lucky that our skills are in demand. Don't let it go to your head, which is a nice summary. And this is from me. What the world kind of needs right now is a bit more understanding. And actually, we are in a perfect position of uh, of power, uh, that's the best word I can think of, there might be a better word, to actually to show this, to demonstrate this to others too. So let's help everyone trust technology again and hopefully prevent any more future techopolypses. So thank you very much. Um, <laughs> this is how you could find me. And if you like the chinchilla, and that's all you liked about the presentation, feel free to come and ask me for a sticker of one of those as well. That's fine. <laughs> Thank you very much.